Hi, baby ducks. <laughs> I can't scream. The dog is sleeping next to me, and I don't want to wake her. Um, but I am super excited that we are back and starting this distance learning journey together. Um, I am just going to kind of talk to you about what we're going to be doing this week. I don't have a video every week to kind of outline things for you, so hopefully it's helpful. Um, so I'm just going to kind of run through Google Classroom, which is where everything will live. It's where it lived in the first place, right? And uh, talk to you a little bit about what we're going to do. So um, let me start with right here at the top. Quarantine poetry has been going really, really well. I'm super inspired and excited by what you guys are posting there. I hope. I hope that you keep um, posting, you know, your pieces and expanding it even. Um, it's kept me kind of grounded and helped with this whole isolation thing just to be able to connect with you guys there. So let's kind of visit it real quick. Um, if you need to access the link, you can uh, click on the assignment area and then it will bring up our Padlet. It starts you at the very beginning um, and then you can very quickly scroll on the buttons just out of the screen in the video apparently but um, click on that button it will send you all the way to the end so every single day since I you know last saw you guys I've been posting a prompt and a little poetry tool and several people have engaged in that process and if you go back you can look at any of the props that, prompts that you have missed because it's kind of fallen off a little bit here and I know that it's probably because you know it's for one it's the weekend right now and spring break um, and we kind of maybe needed to shut our brains off a little bit and that's okay but starting tomorrow this is primary this is kind of where I want you to live um, so scroll through you'll see a whole bunch of posts by you know students um, by teachers even Miss Huber um, Miss Melly, Miss HC, but even outside of our department, um, we've had Miss Tripp and Coach Floyd, and you know some other people posting here, which is really cool to see. Uh, so I'm going to invite them to get back into the game as well. But basically, we are just we have this really unique um, opportunity right now, for the first time in you know living history, to keep track of our thoughts and feelings and experiences in this sort of poetic form. So each day I'll have a prompt. I'm going to try to post um, as I have been by about 10, 1030 in the morning. And then you've got all day to kind of come up with what it is that you want to write. I'm still doing some blackout poetry, but some other things too. Um, this one I was particularly happy with. You know, my husband and I finally got out of the house um, and stayed away from all other humans and went to a, a kind of an abandoned area in Bridgeton. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Carrollton, but um, I used to live over there and work over there and it felt really kind of weird um, and like a ghost town because it is one sort of anyway. It doesn't even exist anymore. There are no more houses and it just sort of um, mimicked, you know, what we're going through in the world right now, uh, which is this kind of weird existential crisis or whatever. So anyway, deep whatnot. Um, post, write, uh, experience it, and don't forget that it's okay to feel all different ways about this. Like some of you have written poems about, hey, I'm chilling. This is great. Um, I am made for quarantine. <laughs> I actually, you know, kind of enjoy being by myself too. So that's all right to feel that way. Um, it's also okay to feel really devastated because, you know, for almost all of you, this is your senior year. And, um, you know, it feels like you're being robbed of that. So it's okay to feel however you feel about it. Just make sure that you are cataloging it with us in this historic moment. And I am pretty for real about wanting to put together a manuscript. So it's important that you guys have your names on here. Um, if I see an anonymous post, which I actually see right here, um, Oh, I kind of like that one too. Then I take a screenshot of it and then I delete it from the Padlet. So I will have kind of a, a different sort of um, graveyard full of anonymous posts that we can maybe sort out a little bit later. But if you forget to sign in and put your name, please, please, please do um, delete it and then re-enter with, with your name on there. For one thing, it just kind of helps with that community building piece. I really enjoy being able to see you know, who's checking in with me, who's writing, and then be able to give you credit when, in fact, you know, we put a manuscript 
um, together later, whether it be published by a publishing company or maybe a self-published item, um, this is going to be a thing. So join us. This is for me, one of the most important things that we're doing, and it's part of our curriculum anyway, because we are in the poetry writing unit. The other thing I have for you, though, um, to kind of extend your learning is to actually practice with the lessons that we would have been doing in class anyway. So you can find those by going to Poetry Week 2. I have the dates here, 3.30 to April 3rd. When you click there, you're going to find a couple of um, items, attachments. One is going to be the slideshow where I outline what each poetry lesson looks like and give you examples. And the other, that's what this looks like, um, it looks very similar to week one that we actually were able to do together before we were finished with our, our uh, year. I don't know. Who knows? Um, and then I have another spot for you to, this is your portfolio. This is where you actually draft your poems underneath, underneath each of the lessons. So um, this, again, is kind of secondary to me. The quarantine poetry is first and foremost because that's the one I really feel like um, captures what's most important right now in the world, and that's you guys and your voices in this historic moment. Uh, but anyway, I will just run through what these lessons look like with you real quick um, so that you can refer back to this video for each day that you'd like to engage in these lessons as well. So the first lesson is going to be Four Seasons Haiku. Um, we're in spring right now. Go outside, really experience it. Uh, as the slideshow suggests, it's a form poem, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables per line. There's three lines total, and I want you to do four different poems, um, one for winter, spring, summer, and fall. They tend to really capture uh, sensory details, so what do you see here, taste, touch, and smell? They refer to the seasons in typical um, typical haikus fashion, so uh, that's why I picked Four Seasons to begin with. It kind of makes sense. And then um, they typically don't rhyme. There's nothing fancy or overcomplicated. And really, if you want to try haiku on the Padlet, too, about the coronavirus, go for it. Uh, exercise number two. Now, oh, here's some, some haiku examples, so you can count the syllables if you need to. Uh, uh, cold December night five. Perfect. Okay, so make sure it's five, seven, fives. Five, seven, five. Before today's lesson for exercise number two, I want you to think of or draw the thing that you're best at drawing on a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to give you a second. Think about it. What are you really good at drawing? Imagine it or pause the video and go draw it, and then you'll find out what you're going to do with that drawing here in just a minute. Okay, a second. Here we go. Um, this is in preparation for concrete poetry. Concrete poetry is super cool. It's where you actually take that image and turn it into a poem in some form or fashion. I've had people do it on um, the actual Google Doc. So this one is a question mark. It's a really cool poem. Whenever you blow it up and make it bigger, you'll be able to read it and see how awesome it is. Um, this one is, you know, she did a drawing, some artwork and that uh, turned out really really awesome and this is a blackout poem example of a concrete poem so it's about a heart and it's shaped like an anatomical heart here are some more examples of concrete poems in ma made in in various different ways so i want to show you some examples next exercise three is a uh, synectics that is a fancy term for it says over here, making the familiar strange and the strange familiar. This is basically an exercise in turning everything about yourself into a kind of a simile metaphor comparison. So I'm going to ask you weird questions like, are you more like May or December? Are you more like a, a stream or a forest fire? Are you more like the sun or the moon and things like that? And you just answer the first you know, thing that pops into your head and give a little explanation. And by the end, you'll uh, figure out which one you want to extend and turn into a poem by coming up with lots of words that are associated with whatever term it is that you picked. Say you want to decide that you are a forest fire. Um, so come up with a, a big long list of words like, you know, extinguish, burn, ash, scorch, things like that. Those will end up making their way into your poem. And here is the lesson for that where I have all the questions. And you click here for an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, that's what synectics is. It's a fancy term for making metaphors, basically. Exercise four is a really fun one. It's a voice exercise. Um, you basically want to take on the 
voice or perspective, I should say, of something else. So most of the time, teenagers tend to write from their own experiences, right? People do in general. What am I talking about? Um, and so they rarely get an opportunity to kind of be someone or something else and have their voice change. So it's if you feel like you're starting to get stagnant in your poetry writing, taking on a voice of something, we should do that. We should like be the coronavirus. There's a prompt. It's coming. Um, but anyway, here are some things to choose from right now um, to practice with. And then here are a couple of examples of what those poems can turn into. The most important part here is don't mention what you actually are, because then it kind of defeats the purpose and the point you can read some of these and and get a different feeling or experience of what they might be about and that's that's the purpose not to write about what it's actually like you know to be a rag and to say that you're a rag but like to take on that persona of what it feels like to be used over and over and things like that uh, it turns out pretty cool lastly exercise five for this week is uh, to play with tone um, the tone is the author's attitude towards his or her subject, and you can do that in a couple of different ways. One is to write a poem about heartbreak in the form of a news report. Not a usual way of expressing how you're feeling when you're sad, so that kind of juxtaposition makes um, makes the, the poetry even more interesting, and it plays around with tone just a little bit. Or you could write a sorry, not sorry poem, and... Um, William Carlos Williams actually did that many, many, many years ago before we had the sorry, not sorry hashtag. And the example is right here. It's called This Is Just To Say, if you want to check it out. So here are a whole bunch of different poetry lessons that we would have done this week at length. Um, and obviously, still, I would love for you to do them at home and uh, fill them out on your portfolio so I can check in and, and take a look and see what you're doing. But like I said, quarantine poetry kind of my love, um, kind of a cool thing that I feel like we can all, uh, you know, end up published uh, if if we actually want to do that. So, so check in with me there for sure. Um, these are more kind of secondary. Uh, what else? Okay. You scroll down underneath that. I have set up a Remind account for you guys to be able to get a hold of me. If you don't have Google, um, your Gmail on your phones, um, you don't want to use your, your, you don't check your email often, you can actually just kind of text me, basically, that's what Remind is. Uh, you can use the app, or you can literally just text at Mrs. Love H to the number 81010, and you, if you have any questions, need any clarification, need some help, need to check in, you can reach me there very easily. And then lastly, um, I would love, because we're all kind of coming back together at once, to be able to see your happy, smiling faces. So if you would, right here where it says distance learning check-in, click on that, and it will send you to the Flipgrid that I have made for you guys. So this is a spot for you to make your video, tell me about how your spring break was, how you're feeling. Um, literally just say hi if that's all you can muster because it's a video and you're like, you know, nobody likes to see themselves in the video. Like I'm already like, ew, I probably should have just done audio, but that's okay. Um, cause I, we're, you know, kind of missing each other. So I wanted to put it out there and, uh, that's, I think that's it. I think that's all I need, uh, to tell you for this week. So again, if you have any questions, Get me on Remind or email. I check it all the time. Distance learning. Check in on Flipgrid. And then I really hope to see you guys on the Padlet. Um, it's just, it's like a little tiny bit of joy every time I see somebody post a poem there. Uh, and to know that we're kind of all in this together. So anyway, I think that's it. Uh, take care and let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, all right. See you soon.